Here we have the Baofeng UV5R dual band handy talkie. Baofeng trans, uh, translates from Chinese as the Iron Goat. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but the uh, price on this is from $55 to $65, depending on your source. Domestic sources are faster delivery and higher pricing. So first the review, then the basic operation. Now out of the box, this thing looks excellent. The build quality is on par with any Japanese manufacturer. I'm talking the case, the buttons, the hand feel. It's sharp. It's darn good looking. And after giving the battery a little bit of a charge, you'll turn it on by the handy traditional rotating volume control on top. And then you'll find that the manual does not include programming the radio. <laughs> so time to go to the internet. There's lots of help out there, including this video. And I'll show that later. Uh, but first, we'll talk about the radio itself. The good things about this radio are the battery lasts a long time. It's 800, 1800 MA lithium ion. And a spare one's 1795, so you can afford a few. Uh, the audio from the speaker is crisp and clean. There's hitting the monitor button there. And uh, it goes pretty loud, it, I mean really loud, and, and it has very little bass, but you can crank it up because of that. Uh, the rotating volume control is actually a refreshing blast from the past because, um, you know, there's not, you don't have to push a few buttons and then push this and that and, and, and just to adjust the volume. I mean, you know, there's, there's no forgetting how to operate the volume control and turn on the radio. Turn it off. Mode. Turn it on, and China Girl starts to talk to you. Uh, the PTT is easy to push, and it clicks nicely. It's almost too easy to push sometimes. You'll find you've clicked it because the LCD will light up with the LED colors, and it, it really has some sort of cool colors going on there. So um, the uh, FM radio also works great. You press this button over here, and you can tune around, and, and it sounds pretty darn good. Let's turn that off, and uh, it automatically returns to the handbands. If a signal comes up on the handbands, it'll just get right off at the FM radio and go back to, say, 2 meters if that's what you're on. Now, the menuing system is easy to use once you get the hang of it, and all the accessories come with the included uh, box, and the, that includes the earphone, the mic combo, the drop-in charger, and uh, the TX audio in this. Another feature is very clean. It's fully deviated, and the frequency was pretty much spot on on the frequency counter. It was as close as I've ever seen radios out of the box. Um, the radio is already cut, and it transmits over most all of its receive range. The only place I didn't see it transmit was the very bottom, right around 400 megahertz. But after 410, it started generating power. Um, the China Girl announcer inside is sort of sort of cool. Uh, Menu. Hit the buttons, and. It tells you what's going on, especially on the menu items. That's that's sort of nice. Um, so is the multicolored LED because you can choose separate colors uh, for what you want. RX, TX, just when you're pressing buttons, and there's orange and blue and purple, and they really look nice. Um, and it's so cheap that you can buy several and really you know not get depressed if you drop one in the lake. You know the bad things are. And yes, I'm reading from a script here, so I keep myself organized. Uh, the programming is difficult from the keypad. Uh, once you get the hang of it, like I said, no problem. It's just a lot of keystrokes, because this is really sort of a generic business ham talkie. It doesn't really know that you're just on the ham bands. Uh, the programming software should fix that. The antenna connector is reversed from what we're used to. So that means that uh, it's actually a male SMA in there rather than a, than a female. So it's not going to uh, take all your other antennas over here. But you can get a female-to-female, uh, -female, you know, lesbian SMA connector on eBay for $2 delivered, so you can use all your other antennas. Now, there's no real S-meter. There is one, but it looks like a little cell phone uh, thing with the antenna and the bars, uh, like battery charge, and it's, it's full all the time. Whenever you have a signal, it's full up, so it's, it's useless. Also, since there's not one for each band, you don't know which band came up when you're uh, you know, monitoring dual bands and all of a sudden a signal comes up. So that's, that's not that great. And another really strange thing is the volume control does not go all the way to zero. How do you like that? It goes low. I'm going to turn the, put the monitor switch on and turn it down. There we go. We can still hear it. I mean, this thing really, really does crank. But that's sort of odd, huh? Um... Also, if you have a button down here, and you got a flashlight, and you know, it's a one LED flashlight, but 
I'll tell you, it's a pretty big difference from no light to having that light when you're tooling around. I tooled around the house late at night, and I just popped it on, and well, actually functioned pretty well. So overall, I give this radio a solid B. Now, it would get a D if it was a $300 radio, but at 55 bucks, it gets a B. And it has about 85% of the features you actually need and some really oddball extras that you probably won't ever use, sort of some strange international features. Uh, it's not flimsy in any respect. Physically, it gets an A. And operationally, I'd sort of give it a, a C compared to other radios, which equals a B average score. And value-wise, of course, it's an A+. Pretty nice little clip. Battery removes with a push button here. Bam, like that. Slides back on. I'll also show you a picture of the inside of the uh, guts of the radio. There we go, back on. Now, operational. Let's assume you already have a Baofeng in hand, and here's what you need to do to get going, because you'll be terribly frustrated if you're trying to figure this out from the manual. And it will take you a little while online, but you, you probably finally figure it out. I'll run you through this stuff, because you do need to set up a few things first. First, turn it on with the top rotating control. Oh, I hit the transmit button there. Muted the China girl. And be sure you're on frequency mode. You hit the big orange button. That's your VFO uh, memory recall. Frequency mode. Channel mode. Frequency mode. So I'm going into frequency mode. That's our VFO mode. And um, here's what's going to go on here. We're going to use the up and down. Well, let's go into channel mode. I'm on the weather channel over here. Let me get off the weather channel. Um, we're going to use the up and down arrow buttons over here, which are these right here at the top of the keypad. Uh, these are going to navigate up and down the menu items, and there's 40 menu items. And the process for setting the menu items is as follows. This is all you have to learn about the radio. You hit the menu button, menu. and it'll announce that you've gone into menu. If you don't do anything for five seconds, it drops out. Watch, it'll just beep boop on me and go away. Beep boop. There we go. So I hit it. Menu. Then I navigate with the up and down buttons whatever item I want. And a lot of these are, are totally familiar to us from other talkies. I mean, there's nothing strange. There's Well, there are strange stuff, but the, the common stuff you're, you're familiar with, beep, timeout, timer, uh, there's a receive CC, CTTS, CT, and here's the transmit CTCSS. It's hard to say that word, isn't it? Here's our voice ID, or our voice announcer there, our China girl, as I call her. So anyway, you can navigate there, or I'm going to exit. There's the exit button. I know this isn't terribly clear, but it'll be clear when you're looking at your talkie. I'll be quiet. We can hit the menu button menu. and the exact number of the menu, like menu 28. That's the delete channel. Or I'm going to hit exit and menu, menu. And any one of these keypad buttons has a shortcut. If there's 9 or 10, 11 shortcuts, and it'll immediately throw you to that one, like squelch, uh, TX power, turn the beep on and off. So all the common ones are, are the secondary function on the keypad down here. I'm going to exit out. So that's basically how you get to the menu item you want. Menu. Some of them you're going to use quite often. So you hit it. And you can use the arrow keys, you can use the keypad to jump over to it, um, or you can type in the number. Here's channel delete, menu 28. So there's how we get to it. And then when we want to adjust it, what you do is you get to it, and then you hit whoop, menu. menu to get into your, first we'll start from the beginning, menu to get into the menu system, navigate around. Here's our uh, LED color. I'm going to hit menu again, Light. and it tells you what it is. And then you use the arrow keys up and down to change the value on the screen so you get what you like. Then you hit menu again, confirm. it says confirm, and then exit. So again, menu, menu, navigate to the menu item, a lot of times you'll be using the arrow keys, hit menu again to go into the actively setting it, backlight, backlight uh-huh, then arrow keys, get it to the value you want, confirm. menu again to confirm, and exit. Really, I found that sometimes you have to actually exit out of the menu system to really be sure it's set. Because really, when you're done setting and you hit menu the second time and it says confirm, you can navigate around the menu again. But I found, like I said, sometimes you have to hit the, the exit to really make sure it's, it's set. So we're going to do that every time to really be sure it's set. So first thing you want to do is you hit the menu. When you get the radio, menu. go to menu zero, and that's squelch. And this radio has a really loose squelch. So I'm going to hit menu again. Squelch. I'm going to set up on 9, because the front end of this radio is not that great. Hit at 9, then menu again. Confirm. There's our confirm, and exit. So now we got our squelch set nice and tight. And then, let's see what else we've got here. 
And then we've got the step. So we're going to go to menu, menu, and then one. And that's our step. Whatever you like, you, you can set it to whatever you like. I like 5 kilohertz. If you're on 450, set it to 25 or whatever. Hit menu again to get it to actively be able to set it. And when you do that, the little arrow will be pointing down. Confirm. Let's adjust it and then hit menu again and then exit. So now we've got our step set at 5 kilohertz. It already was there. Now, uh, menu 37 is where we want to go next. Menu, menu 37. And there's three menus over here that, are, that have to do with squelch tail killing. And what they do is sort of slow down the RXTX turnover time so it kills the, the squelch tail on a repeater. And each of these is subtly different. There's one for repeater and one for simplex or whatever that sort of actively basically slow down the RXTX turnover time. And it, as it comes from the factory, it seems to take a full second when you let go to hear something out of the speaker. We don't want that. So what we want to do is menu 37, 38, and 39, turn them to the off position. Menu, menu. 37. I already have them set to off, and hit menu again, and then go ahead and adjust it. It'll be up in a number. Adjust it down to off. Hit menu again. Confirm. Then I'm just going to, without exiting, I'm going to go up to the next one. Oh, it's three of 35, 36, 37. Hopefully that's what I said before. 35, 36, 37. And turn this stuff off. Okay, I'm going to exit. Now, menu 29, 30, and 31 are your LED backlight colors. Menu. Menu 29. WT is just when you touch buttons. Whatever you like. you got purple, orange, and blue. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, I keep changing them, just sort of having fun. And, of course, they do eat a little bit of battery power. So if you want to save maximum batteries, you can turn all the LEDs off on 29, 30, and 31. Be sure you are in VFO mode, which is frequency mode. Frequency mode, okay, you don't see any numbers on the right. You don't want to see any numbers over there. Now, we're going to go ahead and be sure that on memory, menu. Uh, on menu number, we hit menu, going up to menu, what is it, five, wide. We want this set wide, so we hit menu. And be sure it's on not, on not narrow, but wide. Hit menu again. Confirm. Confirm and exit. I like to hit exit each time. It seems to really make it take. Then, we're going to want to be sure that our offset is set. So menu. Menu. I'm just going to sort of hold the button down and scroll up. Because I don't remember exactly what menu slot this is in. It's up in the high numbers. 26. Menu 26 is offset. I hit menu again. Offset. Frequency. And I can adjust it like this up and down here. It's 0.600 for your 2 meter repeater offset. Confirm. Hit menu again to confirm. And exit. Next we want to be sure that the negative symbol is set. It just sets the, the, the symbol on the display, I believe. So, menu. menu, and let's find out which one that is. We're right around the same area. SFTD. Hit menu, and you can scroll through simplex, plus and minus. This is minus. Confirm. Hit menu again for confirm. Looking good. And uh, then exit. Now we've got our uh, CT CSS tones to set. So menu, menu. 11, 1, 1, and we get the receive tone. We hit menu, and every time you hit the button, it's going to start down at 67. Hold it down. You can scroll up to your tone. In this case, 114. Hit menu again to set it, Confirm. and then exit. Now again, menu, menu. 1, 3. That's the transmit tone. Menu again to allow us to adjust it. Arrows up or down and get to your tone. Hit menu again to confirm, confirm. and exit. Now we're going to put the frequency into a memory. We've got everything set up and uh, I'm going to put 146.76 into memory zero. Uh, I was going to put 8.8 but there's guys talking on the repeater and we just interfere with the China girl talking over here. So we're going to go ahead and we've got We've uh, we're in VFO mode and we press our 146.76. One, four, six, seven, six, zero. And we've got our PL tone set, our negative offset, and our 600 kilohertz and our wide setting. And then we go ahead and press menu. menu. 27. That's the set your channel menu. And then hit menu again. Memory, and then when you use the arrow keys, you'll see which channel slots have frequencies in them. CH, it says in front of it. Okay? So you want to find one that's blank. Zero is blank. Okay, very good. And I'm going to hit menu again. Proceeding memory 
receiving memory and hit it again memory channel. and then exit now we've got to actually key in the offset frequency even after setting the offset on the negative symbol you still have to do it by hand so we're going to go we know that's 146 one six, 600 kilohertz down And it will know that it still needs a transmit frequency. If you're doing public service frequencies, you just need the receive frequency. Now we do menu. Menu. 27. Menu again. Memory channel. Hit it again. Transmitting memory. Transmitting memory. memory channel. Hit it again. And exit. Now when we go to our channel, channel mode, we see zero come up on the right of the display. Hit the PTT. And bam, it goes to 1.6, and you see I have it set up for changing the LCD, LED color on the LCD. So that's how you do it. Like I said, turn the unit on and off if it's not responding correctly when you're trying to input channels. And uh, after a while, you'll get the knack of it. With the software, that should really clear things up, we hope. <laughs> so load up some memories, have some fun. And remember, you're also memorizing your TX power level into that memory channel. So set it for low or high. I believe it's 1 watt and 5 watts. Uh, and it'll just hold it in there. And this HT you know, operating system definitely has quirks, but um, you know, no, none of the HTs are really easy to program these days. This is just a little worse, but it's you know so much cheaper. <laughs> so, and, and the worst thing about these China Gold talkies is that really that the Chinese government is taking all that Western money we send them and, and giving their companies big incentives to produce low-priced goods and capture all these strategic markets like technology and solar panels and stuff. And uh, this gives us sort of irresistible goods but it also ensures our complete inability to manufacture anything in the future. And uh, right now, I believe Jap Japan is on the chopping block. <laughs> That's who this is aimed at, not us. Uh, you don't need an army anymore. You just you know sell a three hundred dollar HT for fifty five bucks. So there we go. The Baofeng UV-5R. Thumbs up.